Hello everyone, and welcome to the Fan Cared Podcast, episode 39, part two. two. Deuce. I'm Josh. Tommy. Joey. What's going on, guys? Today, we are talking about Ubisoft and a potential hostile takeover. We're talking about a hostile takeover from who none other than? Vivendi. Is there a company, former owners of Activision? Sorry, you're going to say something. No, it's okay. Say it. Uh, Vivendi is, is that V I V I or V I V I N D I? I think it's Vivendi. V I V E N D I. Is it Vivendi? It's Vivendi. It's a double V. Vivendi. It's a Viv. Vivendi. Endy. Double V. Sorry, are we sure it's not Wendy? No, it's V I V I V. Not V V. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, not if there like, was two V's next to each other, it could be Wendy. Not like the witch. Right. Or the, or the v- Vitch. Oh, I thought you were going to say the fast food chain. Wait, so what did these uh, Wendy's do? <laughs> so um, they are planning a hostile takeover. Mm-hmm. Uh, they came in and they said, hey, we're, tr- we're planning a hostile takeover, just so you know. And so they're doing that by buying out shares from other stockholders and Ubisoft in a move to try to prevent this is calling upon Canadians to uh Canadian help shareholders, out. right? Canadian shareholders to uh help them keep a majority share in partnership with those shareholders. Yeah, so the for right off the bat, it surprised me that um, Ubisoft does not have majority share. Yeah. You would think that... They have just under. That's... Right underneath. Like, I, I don't... I mean, we're de- they're, they're a French company, right? Yes. So, I, I don't really know how they deal with, like, their what their business practices are. Right. But I feel like... It may, maybe that's, like, a weird thing you do if you're, like, trying to get off the ground and you need to sell more shares and you need more uh, investors. Right. But at this point... Ubisoft's a pretty big company. Oh, yeah. And I feel like they should... One of the biggest AAA publishers and developers. They should have... Should own the majority of their shares. Well, to that point, 45% of shares that are spread out so thinly over so many stockholders is a lot. Right, but you want to own 51%, so this specifically cannot happen. Yeah. Because I mean, 45% is still pretty good. Yeah, but that that means somebody else can buy up 55%. 55%. Uh, yeah, 55% and they'll own the company. But when there's, I mean, when there's this many other stockholders, it's unlikely that no, you're right. one you're person's right. going to be able to buy all those yeah. stocks. Yeah, I mean, that's why this if is... If you have this 45%, is, yeah. someone can buy 46% and own the company. Well, I mean, yeah, but th- yeah. that's but, why but this they're is try known to get as, over as a hostile takeover, right. because somebody is actively going to other shareholders, either partnering with them or trying to buy up their shares so that they can own the company and... And take over uh, all decision making. Yeah, so we're gonna so, talk about a few things uh, in regards to this. Uh, one thing that I actually just thought of, we can probably make some assumptions then about how the company was doing based on the fact that they do only own forty five percent. Maybe they sold that remaining percent to make up for losses. Yeah, so but that was probably in the way early days, though. See, yeah, see, I see what you're saying. And did you say that they only? Do we know when they went public? Uh, it wasn't. Super recently, but not super long ago. Because in preparation for this, I, I did some quick research on their, uh, like, how they've been doing money-wise. Yeah. And they've been profitable and increasing in profits, maybe not as fast as they would like to be, but yeah. for the past few years, right. or specifically 2015. So yeah. So I think we, we might be able to rule out, you know, that mm-hmm. their selling off more shares was a business move. Yeah. They're... Um... They're possibly looking at a downswing right now. Um, there's been some issues with some of their annual series, mainly Far Cry and uh, Assassin's Creed being very glitchy upon release, needing day one patches, and uh, gamers and day one purchasers being very disappointed in what they're getting day one. And they've gotten a lot of backlash for it, and to the point where they're not doing an Assassin's Creed this year. This is going to be the first year since its inception mm. that... They're not new release. They're not having one this uh, during a year. You know, it's interesting because now that I think about it, and we can talk more about this when we get into like why Vivendi is doing this, right. what it could mean for the future, good or bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'll tell you right now, as a shareholder, what you might not be happy about if you're not somebody who's concerned about um, the more creative aspects mm-hmm. is not putting out a game because you want to. 
service to fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're a shareholders, you want game right. every week. No, if we you don't can. care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's coming out. That's yeah. what makes the money. Yeah. So I wonder yeah. if if so if you own a fifteen percent. Yeah. So so if any owns fifteen percent, which is a sizable chunk, sure. um, then th- they might be unhappy with a decision like that. Right. Um, because you know. Their big game this year is Far Cry Primal have coming out. We have The Division coming out, which are big games uh, people are really excited about. Um, but Assassin's Creed is kind of that flagship Ubisoft title. It's the household name. Oh, yeah. That, and that's been around every year, and they always sell. Right. So that could be a big deal for a, for a shareholder to, to not be getting. So let's talk about... Or, go ahead. I, I thought you were going to say oh, something. Oh, you, <laughs> you went... <laughs> As I was going to say, uh, well, that's probably, that's why I think Vivendi wants to gain this control is uh, maybe they don't agree with that decision. Yeah. yeah. And they want their moolah. Yeah. So, so let's... whether that's the reason or not, mm-hmm. whether, you know, Vivendi want, for whatever reason, we do know that they want to take control. Mm-hmm. Yes. And what, so what could that mean for... Yeah, so let's talk about Vivendi. They're the former owners of Activision, which is another very big video game publishing company. Uh, And they are not part of Activision anymore and are now looking to get back into the AAA video game publishing space. Uh, They are in movie publishing, TV publishing, uh, music publishing. Uh, So they're looking to add to that like kind of multimedia platform thing again and what better way to do that than an already established brand ubisoft that has been doing well has reported good numbers over the past few years um so what could be the reasons then other than you know obviously they want to make money right and that's the main goal And, and that's you know it's business as usual it's there's an opportunity here to make money they're going to go for it. And they obviously have the money in the first place to do that, having been with Activision, owning all these other properties. They also own a 30% share in Ubisoft's mobile company uh, from the by the same owners. Um, so that's they're just trying to take from all, everything. all angles. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so this is clearly orchestrated and probably been thought about for a while now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so I guess getting into a little bit of like Potential good, potential bad. Mm-hmm. Is, are we good to start there? Let's do it. Um, when I, th- you know, I think about these games, Assassin's Creed. Uh, what's the one that's coming up? Um, Far Cry. Far Cry. Um, it's getting into like the fifth, sixth, seventh one of those. Yeah. And, <laughs> and people seem to be excited about this next Far Cry, but I, f- I feel like the the hype for those games have definitely dwindled over the years right. since like the first and second one yeah if if those even were as popular I, I feel like people did like them but it's a very popular thing where it's to say about assassin's creed like the release day of the game is the release day for the leak of the next one because oh. <laughs> like literally oh. some, some years <laughs> it's like the game is released and then, then the next day we have like a trailer leak or something for the new one. Right. <laughs> right. And it's getting to and a point where... like you're constantly bombarded and you get kind of like uh, like fatigue on the on the, right. the title, right? Because, uh, I mean, at least the impression from Ubisoft that I got originally uh, was that they were, they were making more quality games, mm-hmm. at least in the beginning. And I, and I feel like that reputation is sort of going away now because they just Assassin's keep making the same games. kind of did like a... One of these. You Belker. An upside down V. An A. No, because there's not, there's not a thing in the middle. Well, there was. It was Vivendi. We're Ooh. just waiting. Oh, oh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so Vivendi taking over, if you know, if they potentially take over, if they get all the shares they need. Mm-hmm. Um, originally, I was thinking this could be good because they could be wanting to take things in a different direction. Mm-hmm. They could be understanding that sort of where Ubisoft is heading is not going to be great mm-hmm. um, because they're, they, it doesn't seem like they're coming out with too much more original content and the quality of their huge franchises are sort of going down. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, we have Assassin's Creed movie coming out. 
uh, which is obviously I'm sure they're involved in some way if they if, even if it's just like selling the licenses off. Um, I think it's Sony making it. But no, they started their own Ubisoft started their own thing. Did they? Yeah. Production company. Now that I think about it. And Michael Fassbender is a part of the actual Oh, that's right. That's company. The yeah. Yeah. So those are big, but how long is Assassin's Creed going to last? I mean, it's been right. many years. Yeah. So you think of uh like franchise fatigue for like Call of Duty and Ubisoft uh, has, Assassin's Creed definitely has that where it's you're starting to see the interest really plateau where it was always going up and it could be that we're, we're in a kind of a time in those those franchises lives where they're gonna be start to, starting to go downhill financially because of them and Vivendi could be wanting to work to prevent that being shareholders at all, but also it's also possible that they don't like that they're not releasing this year, right? That's like we said in the beginning. But that being said, Ubisoft does have, have a lot of really good games. Uh, they have their Ubisoft Ubi Arts, um, where they've released games that are much smaller, right. but that are very, very good. Um, they're usually released digitally. They don't get a, a retail release, but Child of Light from a c- couple years ago, one of my favorite games probably of all time. That's an Ubisoft game. Grow Home was released recently where you play as this little robot trying to grow plants, and uh, it was a free game on uh, PS Plus uh, sometime last year. That's a really fun game, too. So, I mean, they have this small niche market, but then they also have the giant AAA market, and obviously that's where most of the money's coming from. Mm. so i don't know i think they need to regardless of whether they take over or not they need to give more chances to their other franchises they're bringing back watchdogs for watchdogs too watchdogs was considered relatively disappointing yeah, upon that, release that's... but so is assassin's creed okay well see hmm that's interesting because, uh, I mean, you could be saying, oh, well, you know, maybe they want to fix the mistakes of the first one because that game was, it, it looked like it had potential. Yeah, it's an interesting concept. You're using your phone to hack into the government. Right. <laughs> Which it doesn't and, happen, but it's a cool concept. Yeah, it, it, it was a disappointment, I remember. But I, I think, uh, I mean, I, I wonder what, you know, if the, if the good that Vivendi can do is that they come in and realize that things are going to take a turn because mm-hmm. they're bumping out the same products and mm-hmm. it's getting you know lesser quality each time and that's not what the fans are used to mm-hmm. um then the bad part of it is that they want to up that to the max and pump out as much yeah just every like single whatever one of content. their franchises is annualized right uh i mean let's not forget activision is no stranger to the annualized series. In fact, they almost invented it. Right. I mean, the first when I think yeah. of Activision, I think of Tony Hawk. Yeah, and yeah. those games were they were coming out back in the day. We're gonna make a skateboard deck, and you're gonna ride it for real. It was to play the game. Oh yeah, that was a good one. Literally every single game. I don't think so. we. And then <laughs> the Tony Hawk Five came out last year, and it was considered like not even a game like <laughs> like not not in the way that like gun home was considered not a game because it's artsy and you just walk around but in the way that it's unplayable and terrible <laughs> yeah so i, I don't know I, I think it's impossible to say at this point if this is good or bad yeah um i think obviously there's a lot of uh, and you brought this up earlier that a lot of outrage because this is yeah, Ubisoft there's, is yeah. a there's the emotional side of it is, that is yeah you, it, it's what four guys friends who started this thing like as this small little company and they wanted to make games and have it built into this thing and the, right. i think it's important to remember that they're not that anymore right they are huge and they're making a shit ton of money so, so don't feel bad for them necessarily i mean feel bad because it's kind of their baby they built it up to that point right, right. but but this is just it's business as usual with this hostile takeover thing it's it's not like they're they're taking over the little guy. They're taking yeah. over the big guy. No, yeah, yeah. They're, taking, <laughs> they're taking over the big guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and they still have their same amount of shares. They just wouldn't have that creative control. But, yeah. I mean, at a certain point, you have to 
you have to think of, you know, is that good to take away that control if, if they're not using that creative control in the same way they were at the very beginning? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's impossible to say, but... Yeah. Fun thought exercise. Do four friends who started a small video game company because they love video games leaving their giant now giant company to compete against them as a different small company do even better things for the industry that's interesting uh, that's interesting no 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 why because you're abandoning your own baby but are you abandoning is or that... is it not that anymore because yeah. someone else took it over and made it their own right that's what i'm thinking like well, it's i it... mean how big of a change that depends how big of a change Vindy's going to make sure. if they get right. the control. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But whatever the change, it's going to be different than the original ideas that they were having, obviously. Right. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. but no, that's a good point. I mean, if Ubisoft is going towards the point of pump, just pumping out games anyway. Yeah. And everything's becoming stale and done. Then and especially when they have their Ubi Arts branch that is making, I think some really great games can they take that team maybe start something new yeah i mean i doubt they i mean i I mean they they also have rayman really they have rayman which is a huge and those games always actually come out really well done especially is that on the arts or is that uh it's ubisoft uh regular but they um those games it came out for the wii u at first and then the most recent one and it was really good like yeah, no, those are huge. Really good, fast-paced platformer, and also also a really huge uh, thing. That that game, I think, kind of bridges the gap between the Ubi Arts and the Ubisoft AAA titles. Yeah. Um, but those are really great games, really fun games. Yeah. But yeah, you have to think, maybe, do they take some of those developers, maybe the smaller ones, maybe even some from the AAA, and, and start something new? I mean, they they may not have a choice. I mean, I don't know if, <laughs> if they would be people will be willing to go with them because I think it's difficult, especially for the types of developers who are making those more independent game or the you know the smaller titles, yeah, and um, the more artistic ones to get work and get funding to true. make games like that. So uh, I I don't know if they would be inclined to leave. But, but uh, however, the sorry just to no, interject no. here, um, there has been a trend. With um, we saw it with uh, blanking on his name, Kevin something. He Smith, Smith Bacon. No, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> he he uh, started Irrational Games, who made uh, Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite. Um, he disbanded the company, took like ten people from the staff, and started his own independent studio. Um, and those are incredible games. Yeah, and he's going off to make. You know, I think he got to the point where Irrational Games was uh, probably going to have to make another Bioshock game and continue to kind of put out the same thing. Right. And as someone who obviously puts a lot of thought into the games, didn't want to do that. Just took took half part of the staff and made started his own thing to make something else um, more from a smaller indie standpoint. Right, I mean... So, I mean, it's definitely something that people do. I think that if there are people at Ubisoft who do want to do things like that, going with their former bosses is their best bet to do that. And because, because you know, they, you know, they have capital to start up and they can go and start something with some name recognition and then it's an instant job. They have already worked for them. So, right. And then you get to sort of, you get that, the, you know, you get back to the heart of what they were trying to do in the first place was right. just make a cool game that they actually cared about yeah and build that up yeah. but who knows yeah they did however spend many years recycling the same couple games over and over again and that was their decision right and i mean and, and it <laughs> so you have to think it's well, tricky when they do that is that is that even their mindset it's tricky because it could it might not be. because like their mindset may be you know, like after they make Assassin's Creed, you know, and then your company blows up, and you start getting all this money, and then they have the ability to make Ruby Arts, right? Which is a, a, a you know that's not that doesn't make them a lot of money, sure. You know those right. games if they're not free then they're very inexpensive, yeah. but 
still a lot of money goes into it. I think those games are like nineteen ninety nine. So you're right. So so it becomes about like, is it worth it that yeah we're pumping out these get these you know these mm-hmm. big titles and they're not really a lot of thought they're clunky, but they're bringing in money so we can put money into it's true yeah these, uh, these more passion yeah. projects. I guess UBRs wouldn't even exist if they didn't want it to. Right. So so, so you gotta imagine like is is that what the mindset is of this company right yeah. now? But you know that's why I worry about if if Vivendi Vivendi is take Vivendi 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 is taking over <laughs> this company for monetary purposes only mm-hmm. then you know how does does Ubi Art survive yeah you know because like does, where does that fit into the business Creed model? games every quarter Jesus. <laughs> wow <laughs> three times a year wouldn't that be four quarters four times a year four times a year so as far as industry as a whole Obviously, this is going to put, at, at, at least for the big name. Oh, actually, probably the smaller ones too. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> um, the the big uh, you know more production companies like make sure you have all of your ducks in a row. Why are you kidding me? <laughs> <All right. laughs> You're talking. You both have mouths open and stuff. <laughs> we're we're. Just so interested. We're worried you're gonna say. Oh. Is this an intervention? <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. I have an intervention. Um, it's about getting sentences out. I'm trying, but <laughs> um, obviously this is something to look out for. You know, people uh, taking over your company in a hostile way for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I realize this is probably more just on a business side of it, but still, it's important if, if you're somebody who cares about the industry that. You know, we don't want this to be putting, like, limitations on people in terms of, you know, obviously they need money to do what they want to do. Right. And if, if a strategy for doing that was selling more shares to get more investors, then we're going to see companies not doing taking that risk anymore. True. And for small, I think for smaller companies, that, that means a lot more. Yeah. Um, you know, the bigger names, they may have more funding and have more capital on their own that they can use, but... Uh, for those smaller titles or the smaller production companies, uh, you know, this could come back to them. Yeah. I mean, you have to understand too, that like for better or worse, that's how the market works. Like this was, uh, it's unfortunate for them that for whatever reason they had to get rid of that last 6%. And, um, now there's someone who wants to take it over, but I mean, they're doing what they can to prevent it. It's very possible this doesn't even happen. Yeah. Also, <laughs> right. have to keep that in mind. Sure. Um, they're at fifteen percent, but uh, rallying support and uh, taking taking over some shares. But uh, so is Ubisoft. You know, they're also trying to partner with their other shareholders. So it remains to be seen what actually happens. But these are just some of our ideas of what could happen should it actually happen. Right. Um, so let us know. Are you an Ubisoft fan? Do you like the Assassin's Creed, the Far Cries, the Watch Dogs, the Division? Tommy says no. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't. So you never mind, don't answer that. So um, let us know what you think of that. Let us know what you think about this takeover. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? What do you good. think they could... Is it a good, good thing? Good, good, good. Could, it, uh, could it be... Could Vivendi do good things could. with Ubisoft? Could Ubisoft do better branching out? Mm. Uh, doing their own kind of independent thing. Let us know. And we'll see you next time. Right here. Fan gear. Okay, bye.